this was a bad plan. <laughs> oh, it's boiling, boiling water on the floor is good. Hi guys, I'm Charlotte and I've lost 38 pounds in three months on the keto diet. This is the channel where we explore random recipes, products, and tools related to the ketogenic lifestyle. Today we are exploring apple pie. Or rather, of course, mock apple pie made out of chayote squash. Now, one of my favorite memories growing up was around Thanksgiving, we would go over to my grandma's house and help her make her homemade apple pie. Now, I know that there are many good mock apple pie keto recipes all over Pinterest, YouTube, and various blogs, but I wanted to see if we could make my grandma's homemade apple pie keto because that is the one thing around Thanksgiving time that I will miss along with her rolls and her stuffing and a really good sugary ham. Okay, I'm gonna miss lots of things around Thanksgiving, but the apple pie is something that I may or may not be able to figure out. So one of the fun things that my grandma had to help with making apple pie was one of those old timey spiralizers that peel and then spiralize it so then we would go through with a paring knife and cut all the spiralized pieces and um, I remember always just being so amazed that my grandma could uh, cut it towards her thumb and never cut herself I still can't do that maybe I'll get there one day maybe it happens when you hit a certain age or something but <laughs> That's that grandma skill. When my first grandbaby is born, I'll let you guys know uh, if I magically can cut towards my thumb with a paring knife. <laughs> so my grandma's recipe calls for six cu cups of uh, chopped apples or about five medium apples, which is perfect because I picked up five chayote before I even looked at the recipe. I just eyeballed it. I'll be using uh, Victoria's Keto Kitchen's all-purpose flour to replace the flour. I'll be linking the recipe down below. Her channel is amazing. You can go check out the other video where I tried her ooey gooey cinnamon. Mommy, I almost forgot. Okay. I don't know if you're supposed to peel this core part out, but I am because it looks sketchy. Anyway, Victoria's. Um, all-purpose flour is supposed to be a one-to-one -one for regular flour, um, so we're going to test that today. All right, so I have my apples uh, all chopped up. They already seem pretty tender to me, um, and I was going to not boil them all the way up until I got to the last squash, and that one was significantly harder than all the other ones. So I guess I am going to go ahead and boil them. Like I said, I don't know how for how long, but I'm gonna add water to this, put it on to boil, and get started on our pastry. All right, for the crust, and we're doing a two crust pie, because that's how grandma made it, so that's what we're gonna do. We need two cups of our all-purpose flour, so I'll go ahead and get that. You gotta do it like grandma did. You gotta use your knife. Sure you tap it in to all the holes. All right. Then just sit this up real quick. And then we need a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna give this a quick mix before we add anything else. Now we need to cut in two thirds cup of lard or butter. So we're going to use nice cold butter. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it yeah, 11 tablespoons. Unfortunately, I don't have a pastry cutter. I couldn't find one at Walmart. And so we're gonna do it the old fashioned way with two butter knives. We're going with the food processor. Probably gonna get a little messy because my little food processor is so little. Alright, this 
looks pretty good other than the kind of big chunks that I'll get at the top. It's very peaceful listening to something boil over the stove while you prepare a pastry. There's something very homey about it. Here's how the chayote's looking. I'm gonna drain it. It's definitely fork tender, so that's exciting. All right, so I ended up boiling it, like a rolling boil, about five minutes. So one tablespoon of ice cold water at a time until it begins to form a dough. I'm gonna say we're there. I'm gonna say we're there because it's starting to clean the side of the bowl. So, and I'm out of wax paper right now, which is sad. So I'm going to see if I can use a plastic wrap. Okay, you can touch it. It's actually not too sticky. Okay. Okay, I mean, we'll see. You know, this is early stages. Nothing to get too excited about, but, uh, Impressed. I am too scared to go any thinner than that, so let's see if we can put it in as is. Fortunately, it's still kind of sticking to the saran wrap, so I can kind of uh, situate it. Now, most keto pie crusts that I've seen uh, want you to bake it first, but I'm going to follow the directions uh, with the exception of the baking temperature. I am going to lower the baking temperature and the baking time. But yeah, I mean, that's a pie crust. Things are already going much better than I could have dreamed. And until the filling's ready, I'm gonna put our pie crust in the fridge as well. For our filling, we have our apples. Uh, her recipe calls for three fourths cup of sugar. I'm gonna up that to one cup of allulose just because the chayote squash itself isn't gonna be providing as much um, sweetness as the apples. All right, we have our one cup of allulose. Then it calls for a fourth cup of flour, so again, I'm going to use the all-purpose flour. A half teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Alright. Smells like apple pie! Dash of salt. We never know what a dash is, we just... A dash is different from a pinch, right? I think I just did a pinch. Oh well. I should have drained the juices in the bottom. Mm. Okay, so now we'll put this in a pie crust. Yeah, we've got a lot of liquid here. I don't remember it having this much liquid. I'm just gonna, just gonna go with it. I mean, that's looking like an apple pie if I've ever seen one. So now we need to roll out our other crust. What if it looks great and then it bakes up crazy? Flour. Oh, before you put this on, I almost forgot. I, you know, I've done that before. I put the top on and then remembered that I'm supposed to put butter. You're supposed to dot it with two tablespoons of butter. That looks dotted to me. part where we attempt to pollute it. That's going to make it look pretty. So now we have to cut our slits in the top. It's tradition. I always cut a little, a little tree. Because, you know, fall time. It doesn't have any leaves on it. It's just the branches. Here's an up close. 
as you can see, it does look like a pie. Uh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. But we're hoping that it comes out as a pie. All right, little pie. Bake well and be tasty and don't melt. All right, here it is, right out of the oven. It is so beautiful. Oh man, can't wait to try and slice it. We have our pie, it's still very warm. I've let it cool for about, a little, about two and a half hours, let's say. And it's still very warm. I know you probably should wait till it's completely cool to let everything really set up, but I'm just so excited and also I'm running out of time to film a, you know, taste test. <laughs> So my fasting glucose, which I went ahead and took, was 89, and then as usual, I'm going to eat it with a typical dinner for my one meal of the day, and then test it half an hour, hour, and two hours, and post those results. And it ended up taking 52 minutes total, but an eighth of a slice, ooh, it's kind of got like a structure to it, okay, is, let's see, I did the math. Total carbs is 36.4, so if you go by total carbs, you may would have to do like half a slice or see if there's a way to reduce the carbs somewhat. Uh, but net carbs is 4.8 net carbs per slice, which I am very happy with. I do not have a pie cutter. Oh, this is gonna be bad. The first slice is always rough. Let's see if I can hold it together. Okay, not really, kind of fell apart. But hey, uh, it looks like apple pie. Mm. I don't know. I'm just gonna try it. it smells, it smells good. It's good, it's good. But I do have some thoughts. Now, I have to admit, I did go into it, even though I tried to reduce my expectations, part of my brain had decided this was going to be my grandma's apple pie. So there was a tiny bit of a letdown. That's the first thing that happened. That's fine. Gotta adjust your expectations. This is, I mean, you know, it's a keto apple pie, and as a keto apple pie, that, I mean, it's rocking. So the pastry, beautiful, buttery, flaky, melt in your mouth got that homemade taste so so good the pastry is what makes it okay the crust the pie crust that is what makes it and so the one thing about the pastry is that it is a little bit too salty I think that when you have the tartness and sweetness from the apples with it that saltiness really complements it but because the chayote squash is a little bit more neutral the saltiness comes across as just a little too salty so what I might would do is leave the salt out altogether the chayote squash is very neutral. It needs more. It just, it needs more sweetness. It needs more um, nutmeg. It needs more cinnamon. So what other YouTubers have done is they've added ap apple extract to their apple pies. And that I think would help this. In the middle, there's like a tiny, kind of a squash taste. You're sort of like a yellow squash, a very light, but it's there. The texture is, um, the squash is a little bit overcooked. And you know how squash, when it gets, you know, real cooked, it gets a tiny slimy factor. This is just barely overcooked. I don't know. Leave in the comments down below if you would like an updated, complete recipe with all of the things that we have learned. Uh, and I'll do it. I mean, I always like an excuse to make an apple pie. the crust on top. Just perfection. Anyways, I'm gonna finish my pie, eat some food, start checking my blood glucose, and I'll put this at the end of this video. But in the meantime, I hope that you'll let me know uh, any thoughts that you had in the comments down below or whether or not you'd like to see an updated uh, keto mock apple pie recipe. And as always, I hope you guys have a good one. Bye y'all. 